got millipedes at hyperspeed and some bonus poo too as well there. Now next we have our scaredy cat with a scaredy dog. Louisa Sophocleus uh, describes her pet pooch as paranoid, but she also describes herself as being long suffering from stage fright and anxiety about even talking about her work. So while working on her PhD in biomedical engineering at the University of Cyprus, Louisa decided to do something about her glossophobia, that's the technical term for fear of talking in public, and so she entered FameLab, and she won. Then she came to Cheltenham for last night's semi-final, and she won through that too, which brings us to her and to tonight. She's here from Nicosia, so a big cheer for the almost without fear, Louisa Soffer Clares. Do you think I can move this car by only using my mind? Hmm? Let's see. Oh, come on, of course I cannot. But what used to be fiction can now turn to reality. With a, with a technology called brain-computer interface, our thoughts can be read and translated to actions. Sounds crazy? It is, and it's not. In any case, it's possible. This technology can help millions of people with severe motor disabilities to control a wheelchair, uh, move a computer cursor, control a robotic limb, only by using the power of their brain, literally. The reason why a brain-computer interface works at all is because of the way our brain functions. Our heads are filled with millions of individual nerve cells called neurons working together as part of an electrical circuit. Every time we move, think, see or feel something, our neurons are working. This means that they communicate with one another by generating small electrochemical signals, small voltages that travel from neuron to neuron. Those voltages, although very small and faint, can be measured. And we measure them with the use of sensors called electrodes attached to the scalp. Of course, with a hair like mine, this would be kind of difficult, but let's ignore this. To better understand how this technology is working, think of this. Every time I want to move this car with a joystick, sorry, <laughs> it has to be open. <laughs> Every time I want to move this car with a joystick, certain neurons in my motor cortex, the part of my brain responsible for the motion, are activated and immediately send a message to my hand, hey fingers, move the joystick, not with this voice. <laughs> the next time I would think to move the, sorry, then, if I was wired with electrodes, this brain activity generated in my brain could be, could be saved on a computer, localized, and used again in the, in, in later. So the next time I would think of moving the car, this electrical activity generated in my brain by thinking of moving the car could still be detected by the electrodes. And then the computer system, or the brain-computer interface as we call it, could recognize my intention, translate it, and send a signal to the car to move directly from my brain without the joystick. And this could work even if my hands were unable to move or even if my, even if my whole body was unable to move. So remember that an active brain is always so powerful and can achieve so much even if it is trapped in an inactive body. Thank you. Well, you might one day manage to move the car, but will you move our judges? <laughs> How far are we from practical application of this, of having disabled people with these electrodes doing things? Yes, we, but we are on clinical trials. There is nothing commercially available yet, but uh, there's a, a huge research behind this technology in clinical trials, okay. and it's very promising. Is there a way of doing it in the opposite sense, so the computer... Yes. Okay. We can, we can restore hearing for the deaf, um, seeing for the blind. We can, uh, we can create bionic eyes, bionic ears. This is the opposite uh, use of this, uh, of this technology. Have and it's still amazing. <laughs> have you seen the film Terminator? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what relation has with this? It's about machines taking over the world. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a common fear. Yeah. But uh, I think we are not uh, yet there. <laughs> Although that is, of course, what they thought oh, yeah. in Terminator as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted to ask, what are you doing with your car later? <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to give it to, to a kid. <laughs> um, how did you choose this topic? Is this your main research? No, it's not my main reason, sorry, research, but it's a fascinating field. I mean, it's the future, and it's almost here, and people usually get get misinformed about this, uh, this technology. People uh, think that uh, they can read their mind, but it's not actually reading their minds, it's reading the commands. It's not uh, reading what you think or what you want to do or what you want to eat later. It's reading the commands. So, so you're actually talking about an area that's not your main area of research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but do, do you do? I do biomedical, uh, biomedical signal processing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Which so is not far. Close, close to. That's, yeah. a talk, that's a talk for another time. Some great okay. stage audience judge interfacing from Louisa Sophocles. Don't forget.